In today's video, we are going to be talking about the Warhammer preview online miniatures, about all the things they announced and so on. I'm specifically going to focus on the more interesting parts. I'm going to talk a little bit about the models, but mostly about the Necron Codex, um, models that are going to be kind of missing, changed out, um, consolidated into one data sheet and so on. So arguably the more interesting stuff. If you enjoy the content, consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing as well as checking the links down in the description below if you want to support what I do. My name is Deplash and this is Empire of War Games. But we talk about the Warhammer Age of Sigma stuff first. We got a new model for the Sylvaneth as well as for the Stormcast Eternals and both of them are a little bit bigger because they are on a huge mound and both of them look really damn good. I think that both of those factions, nah, actually Stormcast Eternals do have a ton of models, but Sylvaneth getting another model is always cool. The problem I have with Age of Sigma and their model releases and their model ranges is that usually um, it is just one hero character and if there is something that just Age of Sigma factions and most of the game in general is drowning in its singular characters. Most of the armies need more troops, need more kind of bigger boxes or unit sizes of like 5, 10, maybe even 3. And I feel like the same applies to the Sylvaneth, but them getting another hero or just mounted single character is still damn cool. And more or less the same applies to the Stormcast Eternals. The Stormcast Eternals, even though they don't have the same player base in relation to the rest of the player base, um, similar to, you know, the Space Marines in Warhammer 40k, they are still a huge faction and probably have the biggest player base in Age of Sigmar. So they are getting treated a little bit more favorably. And thus they are getting more models than everyone else. And this applies here as well. I will admit that this model looks incredibly cool. Especially the dude sitting on the drake is very cool looking and very intimidating. And I kind of wish that chaplains in Warhammer 40k would look somewhat similar. At least have the same amount of detail. Because if you compare, for example, the Terminator chaplain with the guy that is sitting on this drake, it's night and day in my opinion. I don't think that the Terminator chaplain looks bad, but the Age of Sigma kind of priests or whatever they are in in the equivalent they are just super damn cool looking so you can always kit bash um and all that good stuff but yeah i think it's night and day when it comes to a skeleton looking power armor looking guys at least in my opinion obviously those are part of the dawnbringers campaign or uh, the dawnbringers book series you're going to get an additional book book three the long hunt i also fully expect um although i'm not 100 sure uh, but I'm fairly certain that these two models, the Sylvaneth one and the uh, uh, Stormcast Eternal one, are going to be in bigger boxes, in discount boxes. But I'm not 100% sure. Next up, we are going to be talking about the Adeptus Mechanicus and their Codex, because they are next in line and they are getting a new model alongside their book. The model they are getting is called the Sidonian Scratos, and it is probably one of the models that has gotten the most memes and the most divided opinions on the internet I've seen in quite a while when it comes to a Warhammer 40k miniature. Most of them are playing it very safe. Uh, we are going to get to that once we talk about Immotech. But this one is just insane, visually speaking. In my opinion, I am uh, kind of leaning towards the side of it looks goofy. And by goofy, I mean kind of stupid. But, you know, your taste may be different. I, you may find that cool because... I look at the Adeptus Mechanicus as just wacky techno shit and whatever they are building is just super wacky and doesn't make sense. But, you know, the gun he's holding looks incredibly damn cool, but just the size and, you know, those huge legs and so on are just not my thing. Um, I don't think that wacky techno shit and looking goofy have to go hand in hand. You know, you can make cool looking techno shit. I mean, look at, you know, just a couple of the characters that you have in the Adeptus Mechanicus range. I think all of the infantry-based characters um, are just super cool looking. Um, meanwhile, some of the units, some of the vehicles are just a little bit weird. Now, when it comes to the rules, we have also received rules. Um, and yeah, they have a Radium Jazz Rail. This one has Anti-Infantry 3+, Heavy, and Precision. I don't think I need to um, explain these by now. If you want to check them out, you can always Google those. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's a 36 inch range, one attack, ballistic skill three up, so possibly two up, strength five, AP minus two, damage three. That is a little bit, you know, 
those stats are decent you know damage three is nothing to scoff at but it is also nothing super special uh, then we have another weapon we have the Skratos Transuranic Arquebus this one is anti-monster and anti-vehicle heavy and precision so you know you notice a pattern anti-infantry or anti-monster and vehicle and this one 36 inches as well one attack ballistic skill three plus possibly two with strength seven AP minus two damage three here, the strength is not that important, and the same applies to the strength from the Radium Jazz Rail, simply because you have your anti-monster, anti-vehicle, or anti-infantry, depending on the weapon you pick, and thus, you are most likely going to deal the damage you want to deal. Um, all in all, I think these are really cool. Precision is going to do a lot of hurt, especially, you know, with damage 3, you are going to do um, a lot of good stuff. Uh, my problem with damage 3, is specifically when it comes to infantry, is that it is just not enough to one shot those super squishy characters looking at farseers and so on i think i'm fairly certain farseers have four wounds and that is a little bit frustrating um but other than that i think the weapons themselves are a little bit weird you know one shot that is not super incredibly busted um it's fine I, my worry here to be completely honest is that this unit is going to be very expensive money wise but very cheap on the tabletop. I am fairly certain you're going to be paying £32.50, £35 maybe for a single one of these, and they are going to be costing 30 points, similar to what we have with the Turinids and their Pyrobore. It is going to be weird. So that is my worry here. But we are getting a new Adeptus Mechanicus Codex, as I said. The artwork is sadly the same. Uh, it's just a great artwork, don't get me wrong. It's one of the best ones. But besides the background, it is exactly the same artwork. I like my variety and new stuff, but it is what it is. And last but not least for the Adeptus Mechanicus, they announced a detachment, the stealth optimization for the Skitari Hunter cohort. This one applies to Skitari Infantry, Skitari Mounted, Iron Strider Balistari, um, and all of those get the stealth ability. Meanwhile, the Sicarians, if they are getting targeted by ranged attacks that are further than 12 inches away, they get the benefit of cover. So this one is a very defensive um, detachment rule, and it is going to help a relatively squishy army survive that much longer. I'm a big fan of this one, and I can see you getting way more mileage out of your just points and the durability going up and you being able to shoot more the longer the game goes on. The question is, do the Adeptus Mechanicus have a requirement to, you know, does it benefit them that much, uh, or is it better to just go, you know, more offense is my defense instead of just being more durable and getting more durability or wounds, you know, per point. Um, that remains to be seen. I haven't done the math yet, but we are going to talk about that in detail uh, once the Codex arrives. Uh, last but not least, we have a stratagem. Uh, we have the Binaric Offense. I'm not sure how to read that, sorry. Um, it's for the Skitari Hunter cohort, of course, and it costs 2 CP. You use it at the start of your shooting phase or at the start of your fighting phase. You target two Skitari units from your army that have not yet been selected to shoot or fight this phase and one enemy unit. Until the end of the phase, improve the armor penetration characteristic of weapons equipped by models in both of your units by one. Restrictions until the end of the phase, each time a model in your unit uh, makes an attack it can only target that enemy unit so this one is meant to uh, force you or kind of bring you to gang up on your opponents and um, yeah target the same opponent and basically annihilate them using two units and you know ap is very very valuable in 10th edition as you've probably learned after playing a couple of games and getting an additional point for two units even though the stratagem costs two cp i think is extremely strong Make sure that you're going to bring full squads of um, Skitari units instead of just bringing smaller squads because you want to get the full value out of these. Um, if you're not starting the game, you're probably going to be down on a couple of Skitari anyway. But yeah, always bring 10 of them and yeah, go from there. Um, my first impression on the new codex, on the new model... It's a little bit mixed. I think that the Adeptus Mechanicus codex all in all, that is just my prediction is going to be kind of weird and looking at the detachment this one is playing it relatively safe but i think we are going to get a lot of crazy stuff in there 
And um, I'm hoping that it is going to be a little bit more playable than what we got in 9th and 8th edition, a little bit more beginner friendly. Um, but yeah, I am kind of mixed on the new codex and on the new model. But maybe drop your comments on what you think about the detachment rule and specifically the model. I'm very, very curious what you think about, you know, Captain Huge Long Legs or whatever. Next up, we are going to be talking about the Necrons and there is quite a bit to talk about actually. So the Necrons got a new model announcement. Um, as you may know, there's been a rumor engine going around that has been out there for a long, long time. And the hints in that rumor engine were pointing to Auric and the Diviner. Everyone was expecting two models to be announced. That was the rumor as well. But we only got one model announced. And that is Immortag the Stormlord, as you can see on the screen. Uh, so I'm fairly certain that we are still going to get the other model. Because as far as I can tell... That rumor engine has not been yet debunked and it is 100% a Necron thing. So expect another model. So I expect two models to be announced before, you know, the Necron Codex arrives. Remember, um, or remind yourself that Adeptus Mechanicus arrives first. So GW has a little bit of time to announce a second model just before the Necron Codex arrives, which would be cool. Um, furthermore, Oricon the Diviner is probably a two model kit. That would be my assumption, but you know, he can transform and all that good stuff, but looking at Immortek the Stormlord, hmm, I now have my doubts. Simply because if you look at the model, um, this is probably the second strongest and most influential Necron Lord in the entire Necron sphere. And I understand that they didn't make him as epic as Zarek. He's just, that wouldn't have made any sense. That would have been way too much. But I think the way they went is way too minimalist. This guy, I could easily use as a regular overlord. And if my opponent's not playing Necrons, they wouldn't know. And they wouldn't care. And that is something I dislike. Um, usually when you're bringing a faction and your opponent just doesn't particularly play that faction and doesn't know a lot about them, um, at least they can tell your very important characters apart from each other. Because if you put a regular ass lieutenant next to a this captain that has the relic shield and so on, the Indomitus captain, you can immediately tell that there is a difference there. If I put Immotech next to a regular new Indomitus overlord or the overlord that you can buy separately in the GW store, they couldn't tell me which one of these is Immotech and which one isn't. And that sucks. That tells me that this model is too generic, too boring, and just doesn't have enough going for it. That is my opinion on the model. I wish that the base was bigger. I wish that the model had way more lightning going on. A little bit, you know, just use the kind of stuff that you use for the Void Dragon. A little bit more lightning, a little bit more going on and make it a little bit more epic. I think Immotech the Stormlord deserved a model that fits on a 60 millimeter base, uh, similar to just the Lion or maybe similar to Commander Farsight and all these characters because I think he is of a similar importance level and he wasn't treated as such. And thus, I'm happy that he got a new model. Resin sucks, fine cast especially. But all of that aside, I just, I'm kind of disappointed. Um, when it comes to the rest of the Necron stuff, we are obviously getting a new codex. And the codex art is completely different. And I'm very happy about that. Even though the codex art doesn't slap as much, I still think it's really damn cool. When it comes to the rest of the codex, it was kind of uh, announced or confirmed that we are getting 47 data sheets. And currently in the index, we have 50 of them, I think. And that is because the Crypto Thralls are going to be a war gear option. Nemesor Zandrek and Vagard Obiron are getting consolidated into one data sheet. And then we have one unit cut, as far as I could tell. And that is the low cost destroyer lord. And that is my current kind of piece of information on that. In case you're curious, when it comes to which units are getting cut, added, consolidated, that is my current kind of standing when it comes to that. Furthermore, we obviously have announcements when it comes to a stratagem and a couple of rules here or there. So um, let's quickly talk about them. We have the Awakened Dynasty from the Index that is obviously returning from the Necrons. And we have a couple of other stuffs. Um, so for stratagems, we have the hyperphasic recall for 2CP. And you use it um, on your opponent's shooting phase or fight phase just after an enemy has shot or fought. Uh, one Necron infantry unit from your army that had one or more of its models destroyed as a result of an attack. And one 
friendly and it takes a friendly one friendly monolith model and then the effect is remove your infantry unit from the battlefield and then set it back up anywhere on the battlefield that is wholly within six of your monolith model and not within engagement range of one or more enemy units now while this is cool and teleporting out of something there are severe downsides with the stratagem for one you can only use it after your opponent has done whatever they want to do with your uh, with your unit and all you're doing is saving them afterwards the rest pieces that is kind of hmm second thing 2 cp kind of expensive third thing is you are forced to bring a monolith one of your six stratagems that are specific to this dynasty or the, this detachment forces you to bring a monolith and I don't know if I like that. That is way too specific. That should have been, uh, there should have been just more options. I understand that the monolith has its kind of gate and you can face through it and it is the lore, but I think there should have been more units in here. The um, arc should have been in here um, and just more models that in general have things to do with Necron infantry, basically. So yeah, not a big fan of this one. Yes, you can phase out of uh, melee combat and you can thus save your Necron Warriors and all that good stuff. That is definitely something to just enjoy and have. But there are too many downsides with this one. I personally really, really don't like it. And the specificity with the monolith just sucks. And next up, we have an enhancement, which is called Eternal Madness. It reads, Necron model only. In the fight phase, each time a model in the Barrows unit is destroyed, if that model has not fought this phase, roll 1d6, and on a 4 that model can fight. So it's fight on death. Uh, pretty cool. Um, you're going to use it here or there. It is obviously very, very strong when we are talking about, you know, just melee models in general, Lich Guard, all that good stuff. Um, your Necron Warriors are not going to benefit too much from this, so... You know, if you attach a character to your Lich Guard, to your Treyarch Praetorians, maybe, um, then it's going to do something. Otherwise, it won't. Um, last but not least, there have been uh, some confirmed detachments. So we have the Hypercrypt Legion, which we have already talked about, which is teleportation shenanigans. Then we have the Obesians Phalanx, which is stronger lords and overlords. So you're focusing on your uh, leader choices. Then we have the Annihilation Legion, which is Stronger Destroyers and Flayers, which I personally really like. Then we have the Canoptic Court, which is Stronger Cryptex and Canoptex, so your machines and all that good stuff. And the Awakened Dynasty is your basic silver type from the Index. There are obviously going to be a couple more, but these are the ones that we know of currently. All in all, I think the Necron stuff looks pretty cool. Um, I haven't been overly positive when it comes to the model or the rules we've seen previewed. But I'm fairly certain that, you know, for the Necrons, I'm a little bit more certain that the rules are going to be more cohesive and easier to manage simply because the general army rule is so easy to work with and just so effective on its own, as we've learned. And I kind of doubt that the Necrons are going to get too much uh, change when it comes to their basic army rule. And thus, I think they're just going to be fun to pilot. So that is my opinion on that stuff. Last but not least, I wanted to talk a little bit about Kill Team, simply because I've been playing Kill Team a little bit more lately. And yeah, I'm very interested in what is going on. And we are going to get a new box called Kill Team Salvation. And this one is not going to contain any terrain of any sort. You're only getting uh, the book. You're getting some transfer sheets, a little bit of just goodies. And the rest is just models, in this case, scouts, as well as striking scorpions. We're finally getting another updated Elder Kit. And this one is just really cool looking, although they are all standing on tactical rocks, which is, um, yeah, a little bit weird. But other than that, you're getting models, the book and everything else. And if you want to train, you can buy it separately in a separate box and you're not forced to buy it. All in all, you're obviously going to pay more. And if you just enjoyed getting the terrain, quote unquote, passively, by just buying the models you wanted anyway, that kind of sucks for you. But for everyone else who's just drowning in terrain by now, if you've bought every kill team box, you're literally drowning in it. Um, it's just very, very good. Um, last but not least, I wanted to talk a little bit about the map design. Um, I don't have too many pictures of this one, but if you look at the new map, it looks a little bit boring. You know, it's a little bit formulaic. You just have a couple of things there and a little bit of water in the middle. And then you have the big round platform and that's basically it. Um, what people on Reddit have been talking about is that the board size seems to be smaller, actually. Um, I'm not sure how true that is, but it seems that people have figured out that the map size that is shown on these pictures here is 18 and a half by 30 inches 
So I'm not sure whether this is a mission specific size or whether Kill Team is getting a map size overhaul. I couldn't tell you. And I don't even know if it's true. So if you've done the math, if you can kind of derive the size of the map uh, by just, you know, taking measurements from the models and, you know, putting it into relativity of the size of the map and so on, uh, please let me know. But other than that, that is just something very, very interesting um, that some people may have noticed. So yeah, that has been um, the Warhammer Preview Online. I really liked it. Um, there, have, there have been some disappointments to be sure. Uh, Immotech, the Stormlord specifically for me. But the rest, I'm very excited about. Um, I don't want to be too negative when it comes to the rules that have been previewed. And thus I take what they've shown for the Necrons as well as the Admech, kind of technically, uh, kind of lightly. And I'm fairly certain that the full codex is going to be just fine. The Admech codex has always either been very hit or miss. Necrons have usually been very good at the start when whenever their codex released and then it dropped really really damn hard two or three months later once we got the next two or three codexes they were just eclipsed very very quickly so yeah if you have any opinions on any of this let me know down in the comments below I would love to read your opinions on the models on the rules and all that good stuff other than that thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video take care